Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hello, Germany. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. We hope that you guys are having a great day or evening, depending on when you're watching us. And also the time zone, that kind of plays into it. <laughs> um, we are very excited about today's episode. Um, and we're excited about every episode that we do, we but are. this one specifically, because it's something we've all heard about. We have. I bet, bet there's not a place on earth that people haven't heard about this and know about it. At least know something about it, right? I would think they would know something. I mean, goodness. But what do we know about it? We know that you can, what it's called? The Audubon. That's what the we're here Audubon. for. Yeah, sorry. Yes. And we know you can drive fast, or at least that's what we hear. We hear there is no speed limit. This is a thing. Also, <laughs> that's all we know. That is. <laughs> <laughs> so today's episode is going to be called, uh, the video, sorry, is... The German Audubon System. The Benefits of Unlimited Speed. Okay. So we think we're going to get more on the history side of things here in the creation and maybe some stuff about current day. Mm -hmm. But that's this is what we like to do on the Natasha and W show. We like to learn about things first instead of just diving in and maybe looking at just like a, a video of like a car just speeding down a road. Right. Um, so we go and try to find videos that will help us learn about maybe the creation, the history, mm -hmm. why it's there, how blah, 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 blah. The need for it, all, all the good stuff. Yeah, because that's like the whole reason we, we started the Natasha and mm -hmm. show. So if there's not enough stuff in here that shows us, though, the fast driving stuff. We'll definitely check that out. Because mm -hmm. Debbie will mm -hmm. kill me otherwise. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely check that out if it's not in this video. And if you guys like today's episode and the content we provide, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. So without any further ado, I'm excited to learn about it because again, we've heard about the Audubon our mm -hmm. whole lives, but we don't know, know anything about it. Well, it's time to look at it and find out why it even exists in the first place. Let's find out together. In a world constrained by speed limits and excessive nannying, there is something wonderfully liberating about the German Autobahn system. It's also one of the few times you can utter the following sentence, well, at least Adolf Hitler got this one, right? The reality is actually <laughs> that the Uber dictator really just jumped on a successful bandwagon and then claimed the glory for himself, which sounds very much like him. The German Autobahn, which translates very literally as car runway, forms oh, really? the basis of the first modern national expressway system and today stretches for over 13,183 kilometers, making- Is it the first modern mm -hmm. expressway system? That's what he said. I didn't know that. Well, heck, that's pretty cool. That's uh, Sorry. awesome. Didn't. Well, heck, we're like a few seconds into this, we're already learning stuff. National Expressway system and today stretches for over 13,183 kilometers, Jeez. making it the third largest system in the world behind the US and China. When you consider the size of Germany compared yeah. to other nations, mm -hmm. that's, that's really quite extraordinary. That's monstrous. Yeah. Then there is the frankly giddy prospect of traveling as fast as you like, because yes, long stretches of the German Autobahn come without any speed limits, uh -huh. making it one of the Long stretches. See, yes. I think that's the biggest misconception. It is. I thought that too until I saw some, saw some comments about how it doesn't have, how it does have some speed limits here and there. So long stretches have no speed limit. Well, it would make sense like in the more congested areas it. that you can't be doing, you know, 160. Kilometers or miles per hour. Either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad that, that that's there already and we know. Mm -hmm. It's good to know the few places in the world where you can push your foot down on the accelerator without any fear of flashing lights behind you. And I've driven on the Autobahn a few times. It's pretty exciting and also slightly terrifying. I'd be I don't have a that. car that goes particularly fast. <laughs> <laughs> Considering we are essentially just talking about roads today, the German Autobahn system is pretty iconic around the world, but to start this story, we need to begin a little further south, in the land of pizza, pasta, and excessive <coughs> hand gestures. It's Italy, by the way, in case you didn't know, Italy. Caught that one. Okay. This is interesting. I love stuff like this. While the Autobahn can be considered the grandfather or grandmother for that matter of modern high-speed highway systems, there was a road that predates it. And since we do like to give credit where it's due, it's only fair we begin 
with that. The Milano Laghi Motorway opened in 1924 and was the brainchild of civil engineer and entrepreneur Piero Puricelli. The road essentially connected Milan with the lake regions of the north, allowing the well-to-do to escape the hustle and bustle of the city quickly and efficiently. This was at a time when there were only roughly 41,000 cars in Italy, with most of the population still using carts, bicycles, or just their own two feet. Wow. So this was very wow. much a rich person superhighway. Sounds that way. While the first autobahn didn't appear until 1932, the seeds had been sown well before. The disastrous terms of the Treaty of Versailles had crippled Germany after World War I, and yeah. while many believed they fully deserved it, if anybody had a crystal ball at the time, I'm willing to bet things would have been rather different. Yeah. With the country experiencing high unemployment and struggling to kickstart its industries once again, the construction of the autobahn system was seen as a way of stimulating growth and prosperity in the country. Okay. Germany had already dabbled with the Avis Experimental Highway in Berlin, which opened in 1921. The Avis really? is a bizarre racetrack autobahn hybrid, which is technically the oldest controlled access highway anywhere in the world. Those cars are cool as hell. <laughs> they are pretty I mean, cool. They're older than dirt, but obviously they're mm -hmm. freaking cool. Sorry, just they had to make that. I, I had to announce that to the world. <laughs> I don't think I'll be ruffling any German feathers when I say that it's not exactly the most interesting racetrack in the world with just two very long straights and four turns. And yeah, that's it. The beauty of Avis is that it's also very much a part of the Autobahn system, forming the northern part of Bundes Autobahn 115. Over time, the closure of the road for racing became more problematic, and the last race was held in 1998. The first purpose-built Autobahn to be used exclusively by everyday men, women, and hopefully not children was the Autobahn 555, which still connects Cologne <laughs> and Bonn and was built between 1929 and 1932. However, when it opened in 1932, it was still considered a country road and wasn't given official autobahn status until 1958. The stretch of road has been nicknamed the Diplomat and Rennbahn, the diplomat racetrack thanks to the high numbers of diplomats who mm. were said to enjoy the occasional high-speed outing from That Berlin. is beautiful. It was capital of East Germany. That's really pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> Out of context. When Hitler seized power in 19... That's pretty. I looked down. It says the Nazis. <laughs> 33, the idea of a large-scale autobahn system was already well in the works, and seeing the potential benefit it would bring, Hitler jumped on it. A man called Fritz Todd was brought in as Inspector General of German Road Construction, and the system was seen as the ideal way of bringing down Germany's uncomfortably high unemployment rate. It was noted by visiting Americans at the time that Germany was about to begin building a huge road network, but it seemed to be lacking some rather important machines namely cars. And it was true, certainly compared to parts of the US, Germany didn't exactly have a vast fleet of automobiles on its roads. But luckily, Herr Hitler had oh. another plan he intended to provide. I love the Volkswagen, sorry. <laughs> I say sorry. I, because that's not what he's talking about, and I just saw oh. the picture of the Volkswagen, so I had to stop and say that. Um, when I was Everyone born, likes Volkswagens. I know, they're iconic. I never had one, and I always wanted one. She had one when we met. I always wanted a I Jetta. Did. Back in the 90s, I wanted a Volkswagen And when Jetta. I was little, my dad had one. The bug. Oh. Kind I of. was going to have one, but then new. <laughs> my dad changed his mind. So they're just cool cars. They are pretty cool. Find the people with cheap and cheerful cars. That I didn't even notice Hitler in the background in that photo, did you? I was literally just staring at the car with you that I looked up like, oh. <laughs> the people's car. The Volkswagen. In 1938, Dr. Ferdinand Porsche completed his design for the new car, and a production plant was set up in Wolfsburg. Porsche. Over 300,000 Germans paid at least part, if not all, of the cost in advance, and no doubt many were rubbing their hands together with glee over the prospect of a shiny new car and a wonderful, expansive autobahn to drive it on. Alas, that was not to be. Hitler ordered the Wolfsburg plant to switch to military vehicles on the eve of war, and not one German received a new car or even a refund. I know Shocking. on a grand scale of Hitler's offenses, this doesn't really even come in the top 10, but I mean, <clears throat> what a fraudulent prick. 
Workers from around <laughs> Germany were brought to various camps along the new road projects and put to work building the Autobahn system. Now, it's important to mention that this was certainly not always voluntary, and many were forced to work under the compulsory Reich labor service. Okay. It's therefore probably not a great surprise to hear that work continued at a slow pace right up until the outbreak of World War II. During one of his many barely comprehensible screaming speeches, Hitler made the grand announcement that the Autobahn project would employ around 600,000 people with a thousand kilometers worth of roads added each year. Like wow. many of Hitler's blusters, this fell well short, and it's thought that at its peak, the project was employing around 120,000 people, and by 1942, when things started to go south for Germany and Adolf Hitler, only around 3,800 wow. kilometers out of a planned 20,000 kilometers of freeways yeah, that's a big had been difference. completed. The propaganda image of healthy Aryan worker people working joyfully on the Autobahn system for the greater good of the German homelands was, well, utter crap. With able-bodied workers required on either the front lines or in factories pumping ammunition and military hardware out, the workforce building the Autobahn system was almost exclusively forced workers and hmm. concentration camp inmates. Oh, Isn't really? It? Really? Okay. I did not know that. No. I've, I mean, no. Mm -mm. That's interesting. Um, I, I did not know there was a connection with that, any of this, to the Autobahn. No. Uh-uh. I just wouldn't have even thought about it. Um, obviously, timeline makes sense. Yeah, it sure does. Hmm. Okay. That's okay. The roads appearing around Germany, you might have assumed that during World War II, the German military would be barreling around them. But the yeah. truth was, the early Autobahn system wasn't particularly useful to the Wehrmacht. Trains were still far more efficient when it came to transporting mm -hmm. large numbers of troops, and as the war slowly worsened, petrol became more and more scarce, meaning that the roads were often left virtually empty. In fact, this was the only time when bicycles were allowed on the Autobahn. Although they certainly did get some weird so concept. not in the way they were designed. With airfields around Germany high, on Allied target lists and often attacked from the air, Finnish Autobahn roads were frequently used by the Luftwaffe as makeshift runways, really? with the planes often catching nearby under camouflage. Though See, now that's fascinating history right there. Mm -hmm. That's just fast. I would never have known that if we, you know, had skipped this and just went to straight looking at, like, exactly. speedy stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, th I find that fascinating. All of it. Absolutely. It's all fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's all interesting. All things I would never have known otherwise. Yeah, and of course trains were faster still back then. I mean, the yeah. cars weren't going that fast. So it no, makes sense well, to use trains more. I don't know. Well, when you're transporting goods and troops and all that stuff, yeah, you're going to use a There were cars that could go faster. <laughs> not as much. No, no, not as many, but... Yeah, you're not um, going to get as much but done. I'm really not that surprised about mm -hmm. the planes and things, but that's interesting. That picture is quite eerie, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Hmm. Out, the Allies began picking up on this, and by the end of the war, large stretches of the roads had been badly damaged. Mm. Work pretty much ground to a halt in 1943 as the Nazis were ejected from the Soviet Union with their tails firmly between their legs, and Hitler's plans began to implode. I was just thinking, when did it, was it completed? As with many aspects of life after World War II, the sections of the Autobahn in West Germany fared much better than those in the East. In the West, most damaged roads were repaired shortly after the end of the war, while in the East, the pace was much slower and sometimes barely moved at all. There was also a noticeable difference in users. In East Germany, the Autobahns were frequently used by the military and state-owned farming or manufacturing vehicles, whereas in the West they received a much wider use. In the 1950s, the West German government authorized the restart of construction, while in the GDR things were sporadic, to say the least, and when they did get around to repairing or even adding to the existing system, it was often done with materials greatly inferior to those being used by the West. Even today, there are roads such as the A2, which crosses the old east and west boundary, where there's a noticeable difference in surface quality as you pass between them. While the okay. western section feels relatively smooth, the eastern section is much bumpier thanks to the old concrete blocks that typically formed the old East German. Oh, wow, really? I remember that day. On the 9th of November 1989, as the world watched in raptured awe, large crowds gathered at the Berlin Wall. Nobody's entirely sure how this momentous occasion was going to pan out. But after Public Relations Minister Gunter Schabowski announced on live television that travel restrictions had been lifted, people began passing through the gates in Berlin or simply started smashing down the hated symbol. It was a truly historic moment. Yeah, well, while I doubt too many were thinking about finally linking up the Autobahn system in those heady days of freedom and reunification, 
it did, of course, mean just that. While the epicenter of all the drama was based in Berlin, in the coming days, wow. checkpoints up and down the dividing line were Look at that. opened and people began to pour back and forth across the border. In the coming years, Germany instigated its German unification transport project, which okay. included rail lines, waterways, and of course, new or improved autobahns. There were a total of seven road projects, totaling some 17.3 billion euros, most Jeez. of which have been wow. completed by the early 2000s. This is a lot to take in. It is. <laughs> oh man, I haven't seen a picture of like the Berlin Wall or video footage of that in forever. I was what, what was November when I eighty nine. Yeah, I I'm sorry. What day? November 9th. So it was just three days before my my eighth birthday. Mm -hmm. Three days before I turned eight years old is when that happened. And I remember watching that with my dad and my, my whole family. And then, of course, I remember David Hasselhoff being up there singing, going, why is Knight Rider on the wall? <laughs> I love that we're getting the history behind it. And now we're going to get to see a little bit of it today. Today, the Autobahn system stretches for 13,183 yeah. kilometers and reaches to all corners of Germany, though if you look on a map, you'll see that the concentration is higher in some areas than others, with the west the densest and the south and northeast much sparser. Mm -hmm. He never said anything, and, and if he does, my apologies for saying it quicker um, or, or beforehand, how many areas or how many places where there is no, where there, there is no speed limit? Because I don't want to know, like, mm. how, like what's the longest stretch without a speed limit? True. Um, I'm wondering about congestion, traffic, mm -hmm. and if that does play a part into why and maybe there is does. one. Now here in America, uh, like there is some, everything's different, you know? Um, so like Texas has like an 85 mile an hour speed limit in some places. And then parts of Montana um, have no daytime speed limit whatsoever, mm -hmm. but they have restrictions at night. So there's some stuff like that. I've never driven on either. You yeah. haven't either, right? No, I haven't. Yeah. And like, I don't you, want to. like you said, each each one of our states have different speed limits yeah. and stuff like I that. I think so. our highest is 70 in Ohio, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that's about the highest we go. Um, she drives faster. <laughs> this is either down to terrain, with the south being much more mountainous, or high levels of urban population, as is the case for the western region. Makes sense. In the last decade, mm -hmm. Germany has undergone a huge widening and rehabilitation program on its autobahn mm -hmm. system, with a very busy A5 in the southwest and the A8 going east-west, two of the most significant upgrades. Okay. There are only a few roads now, with just two lanes going both ways, with most having three or four. It goes without saying that this is one of the finest kept highway systems in the world. It looks very much clean. Much the tarmac laid, using a freeze-resistant concrete mix which prevents it from cracking as you often see in other parts nice. of the world. Nice. Why don't we have that? <laughs> can, can what? You, <laughs> can you teach us here how to not have your roads crack? Because... Can you come over to America and just say, hey guys, Man. do this because <laughs> it's not just our country. I know the UK is probably going, hey, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pothole central. Do you have pothole then? Yeah, we're, we're entering our, our pothole season. Mm -hmm. Going yeah. in the spring. Yeah. That looks nope. very new, mm -hmm. new, new, new. Like right there, it looks brand new. Yeah, it, it looks very well kept. Concrete mix, which prevents it from cracking, as you often see in other parts of the world. So the system looking. comes with 17,000 telephones by the side of the roads that people can call for motor assistance nice. on. Surely in the age of the iPhone 64 or whatever it is we're on these days, 64. nobody is actually using these roadside telephones anymore, but surprisingly, they're still used on average 150 times every day, a figure a day? down from 710 nice. years ago. It's against the law to stop for any reason on the autobahns except for emergencies, but luckily for anybody traveling, the Germans do a fine job at maintaining rest stops, service stations, and idyllic picnic spots. Okay, cool. Oh, we here we go. Here we go. It's coming. To quote one chiseled aviation pilot from the 80s, some people just feel the need. The need, the need for, for speed. speed. And for those kinds of people, <laughs> the Autobahn system is probably the best place for them. However, the widely held belief that the whole system is free from speed limits is about as accurate as the dodgy propaganda back in the war. The Autobahn system does have some speed limits, but not everywhere. Okay. It's one of the few places in the world we without a blanket <coughs> speed limit. Limits are placed on certain kinds of vehicles and whether they're carrying passengers or not. Well, for example, a bus with passengers standing cannot travel above 60 kilometers or 37 miles per hour, while if everybody is seated, it can travel 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour. Okay. There are also plenty of okay. sections, such as on ramps, interchanges, specifically dangerous stretches, right. and parts under repair, where speed limits <coughs> are certainly enforced. I so you might be thinking, so. well, Germany mm -hmm. must experience significantly higher levels of traffic accidents, right? Well, of course not. This is Germany. 
they figured it out. Firstly, German traffic exams are fairly rigorous, meaning that those who emerge from them are typically much better trained drivers than in other countries. With the really? system also kept in excellent condition, the chances of an accident That's caused surprised. by an issue with the road surface is drastically reduced. Okay. And the statistics back this all up. Germany doesn't necessarily experience any more crashes on the autobahn system than other European countries with speed limits on their rapid transit roads, and the risk of being killed on the autobahn is about half of that as on American interstates. What if that's pretty fascinating <laughs> that to have, you know, no. I just think Americans, we need to just go take, we should be required to take every country's um, driving test driving before test. we can drive here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially nowadays, the younger people. Oh. It's too many, these stupid things. Yep. And even if they're, they're illegal or not, you still see people doing it. Yeah, they are. And I'm not, it's not, again, it's not just America, but we're, yeah, mm -hmm. we should be required to take every other country's. All we, of them. We definitely should. All of them. Not just like <laughs> Germany's, but all of them. Whatever the Germans are doing, it's working. But that hasn't stopped a steadily growing movement to apply blanket limits across the country. Hmm. Numerous votes have been brought forth regarding speed limits in Germany, and so far they've all been rebuffed. The Germans are proud of their autobahn system and the be. freedom they have on it, and rightly so. Those from countries living under the yoke of repressive speed limits often simply <laughs> assume the Germans must be all out flying along at blistering speeds and no doubt causing mayhem on the roads. But the truth I couldn't be that. more different. The Germans are brought up to respect speed and they're also mm. taught how to handle it. The Autobahn system is a hugely impressive road network that has been evolving since the 1930s, but perhaps equally impressive is that this is an example of how people can be given greater freedom and responsibility to drive how they wish without mm -hmm. turning the Autobahns into the German version of wacky races. I love that video. I, I learned a lot. I did too. I learned a lot. I love that we got all that history behind it. Yeah. Um, and then the reality of how it really is versus what every, I think, person I know that's never been over there and thinks it is. Yeah. There's no speed limit. Okay, there are two. Yeah. And then, I knew it. And then that brings to mind that everybody just gets on there and just floors it and goes as fast as they possibly can. Sorry I keep doing that to you. Which I'm, I'm up on sure, you. like Simon said, is not. <laughs> Simon said. I'm sure you go fast, but you're not doing. So like, what? what is the speed limit? What's like the general like consensus and like the average speed limit when people don't have a speed limit? Does that make sense? That, that made sense to it my head. I don't know if it made sense coming out with words, sense. but because even if I was driving on a stretch of the Audubon in Germany mm -hmm. and there was no posted speed limit, I'm probably not going above 75, 80. I've done 120 is the mm -hmm. fastest I've ever driven, and I was good doing that. It was probably um, a little too much. I was, I mean, I was actually fine. <laughs> hey, I, I, I won the race. <clears throat> If you guys liked this episode, please hit that like button. We do appreciate it if you take a moment to do that for us. It helps the channel. And consider subscribing to the channel as well. That is free, mm -hmm. um, as are every YouTube channel. Just bookmark us for you so you can find us again. Whether you want to give us some love or, you know, even come and say, hey, don't like you guys. Is that people do that a lot. It's weird. Mm -hmm. I don't like your channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for your comment, sir. <laughs> I, I think it would be great to, to try to drive on the Autobahn. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm up for the challenge. Um. I don't consider it a challenge because I still wouldn't go that fast. Um, but I want to know what the traffic's like. Let me know, please. Because I feel like that's got to be like no fun. If you're like, you know, super mm -hmm. congested traffic, it's like there's no speed limit. Mm -hmm. You know what I want to look at? He brought up in here. It's what? the driving test. <gasps> the Germany. I wonder if we can get any uh, videos on that. We're going to look that one up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we should try it. Yes. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a lot to take in, a lot of information. I want to look up more stuff on the Audubon. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to look up more about it. Um, I mean, it's just one of those things that's just fascinating. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, please, as always, love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.